So for naming ionic compounds, it's very important to be familiar with the periodic table. And so with the alkali and alkali metals, we're going to have a plus two, uh, one and a plus two charge. And um, actually with this row as well, we're going to have a, a plus three, which I guess I can fill in, whoops. Let me put a plus three here. Um, for some, although they kind of get a little hairy. And then generally we're, we're going to have a minus three, minus two, minus one here. Noble gases is, is where, the, where it ends at. So um, this is how we know what charges we're dealing with. Remember the positives are going to be your cations because cations are positive, give like cat paws. And then the anions are negative. So for naming uh, ionic compounds like these, this is very easy. All we do is we name the cation, which is positive. And then we have we name the anion, but we kind of we truncate the end and we uh, insert an ide at the end. So uh, let's look at so this this first one. What we do is like we go to our periodic table, and then we see oh yeah that's sodium, which is a plus one, and then that's chlorine, which is a hit minus one. Okay, so I'm not gonna use that periodic table because it's kind of clunky. So we're going to do sodium, chlor, chlorine, oopsies, no, chloride. So instead of having the chlorine, we just put in the ending ide. So it's super easy. So this one we're going to have magnesium, I'm just going to abbreviate it, and then nitro, well, this is nitrogen, right? No, nitride and again these endings are very important because soon we're going to look at polyatomic ions and they have there's nitrates nitrites and there's nitrides so it's important to be clear and this is going to be potassium and then oxygen oxide so that's how you do these very easy this is a metal uh, with a non-metal now when we get to transition metals, which are going to be things in between the metals and the non-metals, like copper, silver, uh, gold, and lead, those are the ones I can think of right now, uh, that's where it gets, it's still easy, but it gets, uh, there's one thing you have to remember, and that one thing is going to be the Roman numerals. So, uh, for example, look at this, how could this be? Because we know chlorine, uh, the halogens are going to be a minus one. So that's going to be a minus one charge. But how does this work out? Because now we have two, so that's really going to be overall charge of minus two. And this is just an overall charge of one, yet we still have one here. So the reason is that we, er, the, so the way we write it is we express this with Roman numerals. So we do copper, and then we're going to do chloride. So it's just the same as we did before, but here's the difference. Because these are, right now, they're the exact same, which we can't have that. So what we do is we say, well, if this is minus 1, then this copper has to be a, oops, a plus 1. And if this is a minus 1 and there's two of them, then there's going to have to be a plus 2 here. So we express it like this, with Roman numerals. Okay, so now let's look at this. This is mercury, uh, which is HG, and everyone loves that because it's really clear and they don't forget it. Um, so we're gonna have mercury, I'll just write the whole thing, and mercury. Okay, uh, now we're gonna look at chlorine, which is minus one, but there's two of them. So, uh, but there's also two mercuries. So we're gonna have to account for that. So this is gonna be mercury one, chloride, or chloride, if you wanna sound like an idiot. now. Uh, now we know oxygen, that group is actually minus two, but there's only one of them. So what does that mean? That means our mercury has to have a charge of plus two, which we express with this Roman numeral here. Uh, and then we know chloride. So when you say it out loud, you do, you say like, oh, mercury two, chloride. Or copper two, chloride. Um, yeah, and that's, but uh, everything else is the same though. So now, uh, sulfate. It's going to be a charge of minus two because it's in that family, and I and then here so it's minus two again. So overall charge is minus six, and there's only one here and one here. So how do we solve that? That's going to mean 
that we're going to have to have, this is going to have to have a charge of plus 2. And this is going to have a charge of plus 3. Because it has to equal this. So they can't have 6 here and 4 here. It has to be 6 and 6. So it has to be an overall, when you add them up, uh, 0. So this is going to be iron 3. And this is sulfate sulfide. And so this is easy. This is uh, the first two pages we've looked at are, are the easy stuff. Where it gets harder, uh, it actually takes, uh, really, honestly, it just takes memorization, is, is polyatomic um, ions. So ha naming polyatomic compounds. So here are the most, I think, the most common polyatomic ions. This is not all of them, to be clear, but this is what I think are the most common. And I've uh, categorized them in a way that may help you memorize them. So ammonium is by itself because it's the only positive one in this group these are all minus one charge and then which is the majority and these are minus two and these are minus three and honestly there are some things you can memorize that will help you for instance knowing chlor anything with an it is ge is generally less than its eight counterpart uh, so chlorite has uh, er sorry the oxygen the the two the oxygen is less in an it than it is in an eight because eight ate more of it, I don't know. So when you see chlorate and chlorite, you can, you see CLO, as long as you know it's chlor something, is it eight or ite? You know that if there's an O3, if there's more of it, it's an eight. More oxygen, it's an eight. If there's less oxygen, it's an ite. And that goes with phosphate and phosphite, though the oxygens are at different levels. And also uh, sulfate and sulfite. But really that's, I mean, that's kind of the only tip I have. In college, uh, especially at U of I, they want you to memorize uh, this group of them. So I don't know if that if you have to do that for high school. If you do, good luck. There's a bunch of flashcards and stuff online. It takes maybe 20 minutes to get your hang of it. Now, so for naming them, uh, you're going to want to refer to either the list, but you should memorize them at some point. So um, I have them memorized, and the list is right here in case I forget. But... Yeah, so anyways, but naming them is very easy. So, uh, right here we see, you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. So, now you see that ammonium, remember, is going to be, whoa, gosh, is going to be a plus one. And then we know chlorine is a minus one. So, cool. We're going to have ammonium, chlor ride and the reason we have chloride is because this is basically functioning um, like your standard metal non-metal compound though it's not um, now for the second one we know that's barium there's nothing fishy about that this bad boy though is carbonate and so carbonate has a minus two charge okay so barium being the alkaline yes yeah, alkaline is actually gonna have a plus two so we're all cool here. This looks good. Barium carbonate. Now, this is what I find to be a little harder. Is if someone says sodium chloride. Well, what is that? <laughs> uh, so then you're going to have to write it out. So here's sodium. Easy. Chlorite. Hmm. Now there's probably a chlorate and a chlorite. So which is the one I want? Well, chlorite. Eight's going to have more than a chlorite in terms of oxygen. But, yeah, I, I, you know, that's probably not even helpful for you. Because <laughs> um, I, just, I just had to memorize the list, so. And then this is lithium. We know that. That's awesome. Lithium is alkali, meaning it is plus one. And sulfite is, uh, well, it's just SO3. I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it, it, you just got to memorize it. And it's, it's two minus. Um... So you're going to want lithium-2 sulfide. Sodium perchlorate. Now, sodium, we're all cool with that. We know that. Perchlorate is ClO4, and it also has a charge of minus 1. So again, I would say memorize as many of these as you can. Like, uh, the way I did it in college is I, I spent probably three mornings while I was eating cereal instead of like eating cereal and reading or whatever I usually do, look out the window, I would eat cereal and then just test myself on flashcards with this. And then over time I memorized them 
and uh, you'll forget them once <laughs> once you stop using them. But for your test, you can you can do it in about 40 minutes of concerted effort. So good.